Welcome to our Facebook Live event. Here from Johns Hopkins, I'm Elizabeth Tracy. It's April. That's National Donate Life Month. We're honoring organ donation. And here with me today is Clint Burns. Clint is an expert in this area. And also, I'm going to tell people ahead of time, an organ recipient. Yes, Elizabeth, thanks for having me today. I'm super excited to be here. April is Donate Life Month. It's a time we all come together, educate the public about organ, eye, and tissue donation, and really celebrate the heroes who gave the gift of organ donation. And, um, and every year we come together as a nation to do that. Let's talk about some of the statistics relative to donation. Tell me how many people right now are on transplant lists waiting for an organ? Currently over 120,000 people are waiting for an organ. In the state of Maryland, within 10 miles of Johns Hopkins, there's almost 1,000 people on the wait list. That's amazing. What organs specifically are they waiting for? So you could be waiting for a heart, lung, liver, kidney, pancreas, or intestines any of those organs, they may be on the wait list. We hear some very dismal statistics regarding death while people are awaiting transplant. Yeah, currently there's 20 people a day dying waiting on an organ. You're 12 times more likely to be on the transplant wait list to be in the position of donating organs. So that's why it's so important <coughs> that the public educate themselves about organ donation. Review that statistic for me one more time, 12 times more likely to, to do To be on the transplant wait list in the state of Maryland than to ever be in the position of being an organ donor. So it's very rare that someone's in the position to actually donate organs. Let's talk just a little bit about who's eligible to donate their organs. For example, can people who have diabetes be eligible as organ donors? That's a great question. I think that's probably the question I get the most. You'll hear someone say, oh, I've had diabetes. There's no way I can donate. You can have diabetes, lupus, multiple sclerosis, muscular dystrophy, Lou Gehrig's disease. There's a long list and still be eligible to donate organs. What we tell people is designate yourself as a donor and we would evaluate if you were in the position of being an organ donor. But very few things rule you out to be an organ donor. If I elect to do that, are there any costs that would be associated with that for me? So designating yourself as an organ donor is free to do. And if you are in the position and become an actual organ donor, there's no cost to the family or the insurance companies incur no, no costs. But if I decide to do this and they harvest my organs after I die, can I still have a casket that's open during a funeral? That's a great question. And we always use the word recovery or procurement. Um, and so if your organs are recovered and tissue, you can have an open casket funeral, donate all organs and all tissue. The body is very well respected. Just review for me one more time, which of the organs are eligible for donation? So for deceased donation, after your death, you are eligible to donate heart, lungs, liver, kidney, pancreas, and intestine. The liver can even be split and given to two separate people. So what's the difference then? What organs can we use living donation for? Living donation, always exciting. So living donation could be one kidney, part of your pancreas, part of your lung or even a whole lung and even part of your intestine. And then of course with the liver can also be uh, donated through uh, one lobe of your liver can be through living donation as well. I think we have some animation that we'd like to show with regard to this particular issue. Up to 80% of a person's liver can yeah, be removed yeah, safely in select patients. Thankfully, our liver is one of the organs in the body that can regenerate or regrow back to its original size. So when you remove a large portion of a patient's liver, the remaining section will actually compensate and grow to provide the same functions of the original liver. We do have another question, but before we get to that, I'd like to segue into something that's kind of personal. You had a liver transplant. I did. I am so fortunate that I had a liver transplant almost 24 years ago. I was sick for the first 25 years of my life, and now I've been healthy for the last 24 years. There's nothing like organ donation and transplantation in medicine. You take someone who has died, they can save eight lives. You take someone terminally ill, and they can be 100% cured. 
just sitting here and I now have four children. I have a wife. I've been a nurse at Hopkins for 20 years. I am one person. It's just, it's just amazing to be a part of this. It's really remarkable and I actually celebrate that along with you. If I decide I want to be an organ donor, what do I need to tell my family? People often talk about designating themselves as a donor through the website or at the DMV, but the most important part of this is talk to your family about your wishes. All end of life options and donation is one of them. Let your family know specifically what your, what your desires are with organ and tissue donation. Age limits, are there age limits to my ability to be a donor? Great question. We've had newborns go on to donate kidneys and we've even had patients as old as 75, 80 years old go on to donate as well. So we often tell people just designate yourself and at that time we'll evaluate. One thing I've heard an awful lot about has been sale of organs. Is it possible to actually sell my organs if I want to? Another myth, a misconception that is perpetuated on TV and, and the internet, in this country you cannot sell organs. It is against the law and it doesn't happen. So um, it's one of those things that um, people talk about and read about, but it just doesn't happen in the United States. Okay, so I can't sell them, but don't the states offer incentives for organ donation? So currently, Maryland passed a law through, um, if you are a living donor, you now do get a, a tax credit, and I believe it's over $6,000, so it's a, a great incentive if you are um, willing to give an organ to someone else, you do get a tax credit. You've been in this biz for a while. I would ask you what you perceive as the major barriers to people signing up to be organ donors. Well, I think social media and, and the movies in general, the, the way they really perpetuate those myths and misconceptions is really the biggest struggle. They watch a movie, this, and that's what they believe. If I had to, to pick one thing, it would be educate yourself on this topic someone's life could literally depend on it. One of the myths, of course, that's perpetuated out there is the idea that somehow if you've signed up as an organ donor, physicians won't really make every attempt to save your life if you come in under those circumstances. Two biggest misconceptions. One is that. The other is, if I put the heart in my license, I'm going to be an organ donor. It's extremely rare. At Johns Hopkins, we had 1,000 deaths and only 15 to 20 organ donors a year. In order to be an organ donor, you have to be in an ICU on a ventilator. If anyone dies outside of a hospital, not on a ventilator in the ICU, you cannot donate organs. So the hospital staff, EMTs, first responders, never think about donation. We save a life, and you're not a potential donor until you are. Maybe you could explain to all of us why it is that someone who dies outside the hospital is unable to donate their organs. Well, if you die outside the hospital and not on a ventilator, your organs are not receiving any oxygen, so they're not transplantable. So as soon as you die, the organs die with you, and they wouldn't be safe for transplant. Are we pushing that limit a little bit? I think I've heard things about ways to preserve organs, maybe even in the field. No, there's no way to preserve an organ after you die. There are ways to preserve organs after we recover them. So if we recover a heart, we can oxygenate that organ for a little bit uh, on a machine and kidneys and they're doing it with liver as well but there's no way once you die to preserve those organs. Could I leave this decision in the hands of my family? Why couldn't they make that decision for me after I'm dead? Well they can't so the answer is they can't. If you don't designate yourself as a donor which we hope you make that decision in advance then we would defer to your family so they would make that decision on your behalf. Are there ever circumstances where the person who receives an organ will know who the donor was? So the answer is yes, it's anonymous, but I chose to meet my donor family. So I wrote a letter, I give it to our organ procurement organization, which is Living Legacy in Maryland, and this is the same throughout the country. They contact my donor family, and the donor family was willing to meet me. So we actually met and we do charity events together. That is so wonderful. Oh, it's, such, it's such an amazing, it was such an amazing moment to meet my donor family, to come full circle and say thank you. I mean, it, it meant everything to me. And my donor family, um, Linda, Kim and Courtney are my donor family. And I, it's just amazing to, to have contact with them. That is amazing. It's wonderfully amazing. generous of you. 
How about for people whose religious beliefs seem to say to them, you really can't give up your organs? We do occasionally hear that. We will hear um, people cite religion as a reason not being able to donate. All major religions support donation. If someone cites religion as being a reason not to donate, we encourage them to talk to their, um, their religious leaders and, and, and work through that process. We invite you to send your questions in. We'd love to hear what your thoughts are about this, or even if you have something you'd like to share relative to donation, we'd really love to hear it. We have some things underway here at Johns Hopkins with regard to living donation, mm -hmm. and I know we're not talking a lot about that, but paired living donation and other ways to try to get some of those folks who are waiting for kidneys mm -hmm. off that transplant list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, there's actually a national push to kind of, it's a pool of people who need kidneys. You put your name nationally, and they're able to pair people. So if I wanted to give a kidney to my sister, I wasn't eligible. I could give a kidney to someone else, and they could give a kidney to my sister. <coughs> and we've been able to transplant so many um, people that we wouldn't otherwise. Hepatitis B, HIV, and Hep C are not rollouts for donation uh, any longer. So we're seeing people who have HIV go on to donate organs as well. And Hopkins was the first hospital, of course, to, to do that. And here's some more nerdy science. And I have to admit, I'm a nerdy scientist, so I have to ask this question. Something else that's been pioneered here is removing antibodies from someone's blood so that that organ rejection mm -hmm. doesn't happen as often. Absolutely. There's a lot of people <coughs> who are sensitive to organs. So there's ways at Johns Hopkins that are able to desensitize people so they're able to get that organ. It's amazing. How about the other part of organ transplantation, which is you have to kind of suppress someone's immune system mm -hmm. so that it doesn't reject the organ. Actually, that's a great question. It's really not the organ transplant itself that is the issue. It's the medications and what it does for your immune system, the infections and, and the things that, and the side effects. So I think what science is doing, the way we're going, is perfecting and improving the medications. That's what's going to be what improves this process and, and longevity in life. Things to look forward to. Uh, I'm hoping for another 50 years. Let's just say that. <laughs> right. Thank you so much for joining us on this Facebook Live event here at Johns Hopkins. We hope we piqued your interest, that you're interested in learning more about organ donation. Thank you so much for having me today, Elizabeth. I think we have a website that we'd like to visit. So here in Maryland, you can visit DonateLifeMaryland.org or you can go to DonateLifeNet nationally. You go to these websites and I really hope that you click on myths, misconception, and facts about organ donation. And at the bottom, you can click register to be an organ donor. You don't have to go to the DMV, that's another myth. You can go to a, um, Advanced Directive or I would suggest the website and you can enter your information and designate yourself as an organ donor.